Okay, so this video is going to run through the topic of electrolysis, um, hopefully detailing what it is, um, using some examples, um, and really kind of how sort of you're going to approach it when you come to an exam. Um, a starting point I felt with this was really to, to take the word electrolysis and actually look at what it means. Um, so if we split it into two parts, we split it right down here, we have this term electro and the term lysis. Now electro, as you would perhaps guess, is electricity. The term lysis is just quite often in biology and it's um and it's means break down. Um, so what we've got here is a process then which involves electrical breakdown. Um, and what electrolysis is then? It's it's a process where we take ionic substances and we break them down into their constituent parts. So we could take, for example, sodium chloride and we could turn it into sodium and into chlorine. And what we're going to do now is we're going to start and work our way through electrolysis, um, starting at the beginning with ionic substances. So imagine we've got an ionic substance. Now this ionic substance, whatever it is, cannot conduct electricity when it's a solid. And that's because its structure will look something like this. So what we have is a 3D structure, so the cuboid nature, and within that cube we have alternating positive and negative charges, or positive and negative ions I should say, and that's what's being represented by these purple spheres and the green spheres. So one is positive, one is negative, and you can see that they alternate. So every green sphere is surrounded by purples, and every purple is surrounded by green. And this means that throughout this whole thing we have a very very strong attraction within the lattice um, which requires a lot of energy to, to separate these but it means that these ions don't move and therefore they can't carry a current therefore electricity can't flow. But if we melt this or we dissolve it into solution then electricity will flow. And that's because when we dissolve this in the case of something like sodium chloride what is this sodium chloride molecule? It splits, and it splits into the ions. And what happens is these are now free to move. And by being able to move, it actually means now they can carry the current. And so our lamp or whatever we had within our circuit where it was conducting through this would obviously now light, because there is a current, therefore electricity is flowing. So imagine we took a beaker, and into that we placed some molten sodium chloride. So I have my beaker of molten sodium chloride. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put into that two electrodes. So a positive electrode and a negative electrode. And I'm going to connect those up to a cell or to a battery or to a power source and I'm going to turn it on. Now what will happen is electricity will flow. And I could see that if I were to put into here a bulb, I would see that it lights, electricity flows. So something must be happening in between these two electrodes here, this positive electrode and this negative electrode. So if we were to zoom in on this, this is what we would see. So we've zoomed in on the beaker, and what we've got are these are the electrodes, the positive electrode and the negative electrode. And within this molten substance of sodium chloride, we would have lots of sodium ions, and lots of chloride ions, and there will be billions and billions of each. Now once we turn the power on, we connect our battery or whatever, the bulb lights, and that's because these ions will move. Now they're already moving because they're within this molten solution, like any liquid does, they're moving over each other, but when we turn on the power, we will find that actually these ions will be attracted to the electrodes, but not just randomly, the positive ions will be attracted to the negative electrodes and the negative ions will be attracted to the positive electrodes because these opposites attract so negative to positive positive to negative now what happens is that when this ion when it reaches the electrode whether it be the positive to the negative or the negative to the positive a reaction takes place there's a reaction at the electrodes that looks something like this so our sodium ion reaches the electrode and as it does it gets turned into sodium atoms 
and in order to do this, because it's a positively charged ion, it must gain electrons. Now if you think back to how this positive ion comes to be, if we take a sodium atom and we remove an electron, we end up with a unipositive ion, a positive ion that's charged plus one, so the Na plus ion. So to get it back to its atomic state without the charge, we have to put that electron back onto it. Now in the case of the chloride ion, it exists as a diatomic molecule, the Cl2, and in this case it is negative, therefore in its life it has gained an electron, so we must take that electron away. But of course now we have to make sure this is balanced, so we have two chlorines here, so we've got to balance this up, each one of those losing an electron, therefore two electrons are lost. You can also see this written the other way around. This is a better way, uh, more because of at later stages, uh, more of an A-level thing, it, it allows to you to combine what, um, what are called half equations uh, more easily. But you just might sit like this as well, and actually it's the same thing. So the minus two electrons on this side is the same as having the plus two electrons on the other side, and it's just really algebra. So as I just touched upon there, these things here are called half equations. Now each one of these half equations shows something happening. It either shows oxidation or it shows reduction. Now oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons, oil rig. So in this case we are gaining electrons, therefore this is reduction. And over here we are losing electrons, therefore this is oxidation. So you must be able to determine through whether electrons are being gained or lost whether it's oxidation or reduction. And also you must be able to define the terms oxidation and reduction in terms of loss of electrons and gain of electrons. So no matter what happens, ions are always turned into atoms or into molecules in the case of things like chlorine, bromine, iodine or hydrogen. Ions become atoms and they do so by either gaining electrons or losing electrons. Okay, so if we look at the same thing again but this time we look at a sodium chloride solution, this state symbol here, the AQ being aqueous, so it's in this case sodium chloride dissolved in water we would still see the same thing. We would still see a bulb here. We would still see it light up. So electricity is still flowing through here. So there must be something similar happening as before between here, between these electrodes. So again, if we zoom in, we have sodium ions as before, and we have chloride ions as before. But because it's dissolved in water now, we also have the water, or the, the constituent particles of the water. So what we find is our water breaks down and it breaks down into a hydrogen ion and what's called a hydroxide ion. So these are now also present and again there'll be billions of all of these floating around. Electrolyzing solution is a little bit more difficult but you just need to follow the rules and the rules are as this. The first one, when we look at our metal ion, in this case the sodium ion, if that is more reactive than a hydrogen which is now present because of the water, then the hydrogen will be produced the electrode. So what will happen is this will move over to here and in doing so we will get this reaction. The other rule is when we look at the other ion, so the negative ion, if that is a halide ion and by that I mean an ion that comes from group 7 then that will be attracted and we'll get the same as before. We'll get the chloride losing two electrons going to the chlorine. Now if we do not have a, a halide ion, so either a chloride, a bromide or an iodide, we instead find that the hydroxide ion will be attracted to the positive ion and if that happens we get the following reaction. We get this occurring and of course here what we would see is oxygen gas produced Okay, so I want you to have a go at the, this question here. So what is produced the electrodes when the following is electrolyzed? Copper chloride, 
made of the copper 2 plus ion, it's chloride ion, and potassium sulfate made of the potassium ion and this sulfate ion. Imagine that both are solutions and I want to see what is produced at each electrode and if you can, the half equation for each one of those reactions. Okay, so this first one, copper chloride, CuCO2. Now this is what you would see if you had a beaker of copper chloride in it, dissolved in water in solution, and obviously I've just simplified this massively. Now again, our positive ions are either the hydrogen ion or the copper 2 plus, and remember that the, the what determines what's going to be made is the reactivity. If our metal is more reactive than hydrogen, hydrogen will be produced. Now in this case, copper 2 plus is really unreactive, that's why we use it for things like pipes, uh, water pipes, it does not react easily. So we'll find that our copper 2 plus will be attracted to our negative electrode and there will be a reaction there and the copper 2 plus will get turned copper to copper and in doing so it will gain some electrons, gain two electrons and that again cancels this charge, it gives it back the electrons it lost um, when it became an ion and it turns it back to copper. And we would actually see that around here as an orangey coating. Okay, we would see this copper start to build up on this electrode. The other side we've got either the chloride ion or the hydroxide ion and again chloride ion is a halide ion therefore it will preferentially be attracted to the positive electrode and we'll have that same half equation as before two chloride ions each one of them losing an electron become this chlorine molecule Cl2. So hopefully you got that at the negative electrode copper would be produced and that's negative and that at the positive electrode chlorine would be produced and again if you got the half equations then that's absolutely spot on. Okay let's have a look at the potassium sulfate now. Okay so we're exactly the same as before we know we've got a solution this time we've got potassium sulfate dissolved in it. So draw those ions in. This time, starting as we did before, we have potassium ions. Now as our metal ion, they are very reactive. They react very, very vigorously with water. So therefore much more reactive than the hydrogen. But they will be attracted to the negative electrode. And here we would have a reaction occurring just like this. Again, didn't specify the other one, but gaining electrons there, a reduction. Other one, we've got the option now of the sulfate ion or this hydroxide ion. Now, remember what I said before is if we have a halide ion, then we will get the halide ion attracted to the positive ion. We don't in this case, therefore the hydroxide ion takes precedent. It will be attracted, and we have that slightly more difficult reaction which the best way to do this is just to learn it really. With the four electrons there. And there you have it. Electrolysis as per the AQA certificate in chemistry or IGCC specification.